Today we're looking at the Vincent Bach Corporation 1E Megatone mouthpiece. This mouthpiece is heavier, and this was Bach's answer to uh, an efficiency problem that was really brought up by David Monette. Uh, it became very evident that the heavier type mouthpieces were more favorable to a lot of trumpet players. And the reason that's true is because adding more mass means you're adding inertia. And when you add inertia to a mouthpiece, you're preventing the standing wave at the antinodes from converting into vibration. So think of your standing wave as energy in the air. And when the antinodes, which are the different partials, when the antinodes line up with a thin section of tubing or mouthpiece, then they can overcome the inertia and uh, transfer that energy into vibration. So box megatone was designed to prevent that problem. Uh, this one, being a 1E, would really be suited for uh, high plane, commercial plane, or maybe piccolo, because the E, which is the shallowest cup in the Bach line, uh, really allows your bottom lip to be pressed against the bottom of the cup, props it up so it's easier to play high notes. And uh, if you're interested in understanding the physics of how that works, I have videos that explain how the aperture works and why shallow mouthpieces can help some people play higher, even though it's probably not the preferred method. So this is a 1E. The diameter should be a 1. Uh, what that really means is it should be a certain size and thousandths of an inch. I'm going to use my caliper, as always, and measure it and give you that number. And it looks like this one is a... Uh, 619. Uh, so because it's a 619, it really isn't a 1. That would be very much like a 3. So most Bach 3 mouthpieces, the diameter would be about 624. So we're pretty close to that. It's actually a little smaller than a, a 3, even though it is stamped 1. And that's fairly common in the Bach line that the diameter is nothing like what it was stamped. Uh, I don't have the exact explanation of why that happens. However, uh, they've used various manufacturers, ver various lathes and equipment within their own factory, and all of those factors have created some variations that don't always match what's stamped. So if you want to verify that the mouthpiece you're playing is the correct size, uh, then either take it to a machine shop and have it measured, or um, you, know, you could always bring it here and we can measure it for you as well. So the Bach 1E Megatone, um, I want to measure the throat and see what gauge pin is going to fit through this one. I've got my gauge pin set right here. Looks like 143 fits all the way up to 147. So this is a 147. And you know, I'm going to see if we can get that 147 number right on the camera. Do you see that? 147 is the size that fits. If I go to 148, it doesn't fit anymore. This is a very tight fit. Okay, so it's a 147, uh, that's 147 thousandths of an inch. That would also be a number 26 in the drill chart. And we're going to measure the backboard, which is the opening right here. That is a 360. So that backboard determines how much of your sound is going to spread out or be focused. If it's really big, then the sound will spread out more to the size of the room. You'll have more fray and a little bit of fuzziness sometimes. When it's really tight, then it is going to be more focused. A 360 thousandths back bore is pretty big. The largest you can make is about a 380, and uh, 360 is very close to that. So I'm going to play it for you. Let's see how this baby sounds. <laughs> So it has quite a bit of brightness. I can hear that it opens up on the back bore and it is spreading more, but that mouth, the throat is very small. 147 is extremely small for most mouthpieces. Um, however, in the average of all things, 147 uh, tends to be the average of all mouthpieces that are sold. In a range of all the variations, it's very small. So uh, it sounds bright. It also feels very shallow to me meaning my bottom lip doesn't get the amplitude I want it to have. And because I play with an aperture controlled embouchure, 
where I'm controlling things with my lips and my air, then uh, I don't need to prop the mouthpiece or the, the bottom lip into the cup of the mouthpiece. So because I'm not normally doing that, it, you know, it's not necessary. So this mouthpiece would be great for a high plane. And it does sound a little thin up top. Overall, if you're looking for a mouthpiece that is really going to give you some sizzle, this could be a solution. However, I would prefer that most players don't go quite this shallow because it's going to do you a disservice in terms of learning how to play with a great aperture and a great embouchure. <laughs>